Hey everyone, Foyrex here with another tutorial. This time I want to show you how to properly work with triggers. I'm going to show you several common problems that mission makers encounter, mostly it's simple things and all that is somehow related to triggers. I take all questions from my previous website, if there are more things you'd like to know, write the questions in the comments. Ok, let's blaze through the basics with triggers so that anyone knows what we are talking about. To create a trigger, press F3 in your editor window. Double click anywhere and set up your trigger. In the first section you can customize the shape of the trigger. So if you want to control a certain area with the trigger, over here you can choose how big the area should be, circle or rectangle and the dimension. Next, you can customize the timer section, basically it's the delay of the trigger. Once a condition is met, the trigger can wait for a certain time and then activate itself. The difference between countdown and timeout is simple. Once the condition is true, the countdown starts ticking and after a given time the trigger is activated. If the timeout is chosen, the condition must be true for the given period of time, then the trigger is activated. A short example. If the condition is player's presence in the designated area and the countdown is set to 5 seconds, once the player enters the area and 5 seconds pass, the trigger gets activated no matter what. With timeout, the player must be in the area for 5 seconds, only then the trigger will activate. Next you can choose the name of the trigger, which is handy if you want to use commands to manipulate with the trigger. Text serves mostly for map makers and also for the player if you want to use the trigger as a radio. The type of the trigger, well, each type is a little bit specific, but let's explain them anyway. None has no effect on the mission, well apart from commands that you input. Guarded triggers serve as points that can be guarded by soldiers of given side. Basically, if you have a soldier and give him the guard waypoint, he'll move closer to the trigger so that he can defend it. Switch serves for waypoints. You can change the waypoints based on triggers, but it's something I don't really want to explain at the moment. End terminates the mission. If you are making campaign, you can use more endings that can lead to different missions. And loose ends the mission with instant failure. It's almost like another type of ending. Ok, next we have the activation. Over here you can choose which side activates the trigger. You can also choose if the site needs to be present, not present or spotted by other site. And if the trigger should activate only once in a mission or every time the condition is met. And now to the most important part of every trigger, we have three important boxes, condition, on activation, on the activation. Condition is simply what needs to be done. The word this is referring to the trigger itself. It means that you can use the fields like activation and shape. The trigger will be activated when these conditions are met. The word this can be replaced with other conditions and that usually means that the trigger no longer waits for a site to be present but instead it waits only for the given condition. The on activation box is a place for commands that are executed once the trigger is activated. The on deactivation box is the same thing but the commands are executed on the activation of the trigger. So I told you what you can do with the trigger, let's try it on an example. The music starts 2 seconds after the player leaves this area. Now that we know how basic triggers work, I'll explain several common problems that people have been asking me in the past. If you have any more questions, please write them down in the comments. I'll answer the simple ones and, if needed, I'll make another video answering the more complicated questions. For today, I prepared 5 problems with triggers. Number 1. How to activate the trigger only by player's unit? 
So this is a pretty common problem and it has a very simple solution too. Just switch to F2 groups and now click on the trigger, drag the line to any unit on the map and now the trigger changes a little bit. It can be activated by the unit itself, anyone from its group, its commander. So drag the line to the player and now you have a trigger that can be activated only by the player's unit. Number 2. How to activate the trigger only under some conditions? Well, there's a box called condition for this. Write any condition over here and the trigger will wait until that condition is true. By default, there's the condition this. That means that you can use all these boxes and buttons above, like activation and all that. If you change the condition from this to something else, like for example, not a live player, the trigger will not wait until someone comes to this area, it will wait only for the moment when the player dies. Actually, these facts can serve you really well in many situations. Let me show you three basic examples. So, the first one is simply waiting for anyone from the blue floor to come into this area. So we have a vehicle, a soldier and a plane. Once any of these gets to this location, the trigger activates itself and shows a message on the screen. That's a basic blue for present trigger and you can see that the plane being the fastest one of the three activates the trigger. Second example, let's make the trigger wait until the plane reaches 150 km per hour. Now the condition has been changed. So it doesn't matter anymore that someone is inside the area. The trigger waits only for the plane to accelerate to 150 km. Only then it activates itself. And the last example, something like a combination of the two. Let's have a trigger that waits for the player and it activates itself only if the player enters this area in this vehicle. So let's try it first on foot, it does nothing. Now enter a different car, nothing again. Now enter the correct car and suddenly it's working. So hopefully you'll get the idea of how it works. Number 3. What are the possible conditions that can be used? Honestly, there's quite a lot of them. Just keep making missions and visit the Bohemia Interactive Community Wikipedia for commands and after some time you'll know them. I don't really feel like listing all of them right now, also every condition is a little bit different, so let's move on. Number 4. How to add multiple conditions or commands. If you use the command as a condition, you need to follow different rules than with a normal command. So conditions are separated by AND or just these two signs. I'll use the example from the previous questions. The trigger can only be activated when the player is in a car and when he arrives to a certain location. So I want to use the shape of the trigger. I need to have this in the condition. I also want to add my own condition. So let's write AND player in car. So I need to make sure that the car is named car, otherwise it will not work. Also, if you want to wait for a moment when the player is not in a car, you can write this and not player in car, or use the exclamation sign. This and exclamation sign player in car. For even more complicated condition, use brackets. All other commands that don't serve as conditions are separated by this sign. The whole concept of some commands that set values while others return values and some are used differently than other ones, it can be confusing at first, but I can assure you it has a very strong logic and once you familiarize yourself with how it's done, it will be much easier for you. For now, you should remember that commands that only return values can mostly be used as conditions, while commands that modify values cannot be used. And finally, number 5. How to launch a script by a trigger. If you already make scripts, you probably know the commands that are used to launch them. Most common, spawn, exits, vm are very simple. Variable equals to brackets with parameters, spawn or exits, vm name of the script. It's that simple. You can find these commands in the video description if you want to use them. 
I could talk about launching scripts a bit more, how to use parameters and such, but I think I'm gonna dedicate another video to them. This is gonna be it for this video, comment, like and share and have a nice day!